Everybody who just joined us on video, it's good to have you with us this morning. We just got done singing Victory in Jesus, and we were certainly challenged. <laughs> well, let me put it to you this way. At least the pastor was challenged. Because when that screen went blank, so did my mind. <laughs> but I'm telling you, victory sometimes is not giving up. I just watermelon, oh, watermelon, <laughs> until I get to something I don't know. <laughs> and y'all won't do it in? Sometimes it pays to have the songbook in front of you when you don't know where people are going. And so, what a blessing, what a blessing. There is something to that song, though, that I want us to get out of it more than the lesson that we got. And that was to never give up, of course. But <laughs> that in mind, how we define victory in our lives. I grew up in, in sports and rodeo, both. And so victory was literally winning. There was none of this, well, you, you tried your best. <laughs> but I didn't win. Well, you know, you gave it your best shot. Yeah, but I didn't win. And, and there was a certain mentality that went with that after a while. When you had an expectation of winning, if you did not win, you were, I mean, you, you could have been a hundredth place and it wouldn't have mattered. Second was a hundred. Second was the first loser. Pick something. I don't care what you do. <laughs> Victory was winning. Yeah. And winning came at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I didn't like losing at checkers. <laughs> I didn't like losing an argument. <laughs> now, honestly. That's the truth. That's the truth. My wife didn't shake your head. That is an honest and goodness truth. Yeah. I will fight you to a war of an argument. And if I'm wrong, I'll find a way to be right. <laughs> victory. Now, let me tell you something along the way with that. Sometimes victory comes with a big, big, big payoff. And sometimes it leaves behind a big, big, big debt. And you all automatically think of money. Are you willing to get money? Are you willing to get a trophy? You get a reward, you get a prize. And if you don't, all the money you cost trying to get there. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Sometimes it leaves a debt in your spiritual life. It leaves a debt, uh, especially if you're trying to win an argument, and depending on who you're arguing with, it can leave scars. Right. Because let me tell you something, there's a point in an argument where it's win or go home. And everything comes off the table. We can get into name calling, whatever. Because we're winning at all costs. And that's not right. That's not, that's not winning. See, Christ defines winning completely different. We win in Jesus. And we win by never quitting. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to go through trials, you're going to go through valleys, you're going to go through battles, you're going to go through temptations, you're going to go through all kinds of things in your life. None of us, none of us can get away from that. Right. If Jesus was tempted, you'll be tempted. If he was tried, you'll be tried. If he was beaten and flogged, you'll be beaten and flogged. I'm telling you, persecution will come upon you if you claim to be a Christian. There's no way around it. That being said, sometimes the victory is not in winning, it's in not quitting. Turn with me to Psalms 121. And I'm going to read the whole psalm. It's eight verses. You can make it. My help comes from the Lord, a song of ascent. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. 
The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. I don't know, that's a pretty strong praise right there. It's a song written to be sung. To be sung in praise. If you do not have a plan of attack to defeat Satan, if you do not have a plan to attack him daily, he's going to beat you. Because I'm going to tell you, he has one plan for you every day, and that is to destroy you. Now, hear me, Christian. Some of you walk around, yeah, right, whatever. You can whatever me down. You can. But the day's come when we will all get on our knees and we will bow before the Lord. Yes, this is not a question. This is not, this is not, I'm thinking this or this could happen. This is going to happen. Amen. The day will come when we will all stand before our maker. And many of you think you've got all the time in the world to prepare for it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the graveyard is full of different sized graves. They range from shoebox size to full size. You don't know your days. So you need to be prepared every day. And you need to have a plan of attack every day when you get up. How many of you write down or jot down, you, you have a job, and so uh, before you leave the day before, you kind of jot down your plan of attack when you come in the next day? Anybody? All about six or eight of you. What well, the rest of you do? Fly by the seat of your parents? You must have a heck of a job. Oh, it's in my head. I like that. It's in my head. Sometimes the hard part is getting that out. Finding that filing cabinet in there. But that's why right. most people put some little agenda down that they've got for the next day. Now, we all know that you open up your email, you open up everything in the morning, that may all change. But you had an agenda, you had a plan of attack. I'm going to get this done, I'm going to make this happen, I'm going to get this done. How many of you have ever planned something? A big party, a big event, a big wedding, a big this, a big that, whatever. Okay, you've done that. Hopefully, you sit down and you have some kind of plan of attack. Because if you don't, Lord love you. Because it just comes at you from every direction. You need some kind of plan of attack. And if you don't, somebody will come along and help you. It may not be the help you want. It may not be the help you need. But somebody's always willing to put their two cents worth in and help you. The devil is no different. If you don't plan for him, he will plan for you. Because he has one job, and that is to defeat you. To bring you down. To destroy you. To destroy your life. To destroy your family. To destroy your walk with the Lord. Oh, he'll let you come to church. As a matter of fact, he'll encourage you to go to church. You just can't live for the Lord. You can go to church, but... Don't act like those church people. For God's sakes, don't act like them church people. I don't know. There's some church people I won't act like, and there's some I don't. And usually the ones I don't, some one the devil's warning me about. How many of you know Satan came here this morning? Yeah. Somebody brought him. Somebody brought him. Now we got everybody looking around the room at each other. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Because some of us aren't living for the Lord. And if you aren't living for the Lord, who's living in you? So who did you bring with you? There you have it. Pretty simple. Religion, walking after the Lord, not a tough thing. It's, it's, not, it's not this, this high-end 
philosophical thing that we try to make it. It's pretty simple. The Lord kept it simple so the fishermen and the blue-collar guys, the, the game players and everybody else could do it in his day. Think about the men he put around him. He didn't put priests and Levites. He put tax collectors, fishermen, zealots, which was gang members of the day. Prostitutes. Think about who he put around him. So he had to keep it pretty simple. And now, it's you and I. Thank the Lord he kept it simple. Now Satan will give you all kinds of philosophy and philosophical things to make you feel important and like you know something. And all he's doing is blinding your eyes so he can destroy you. Satan's plan, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. And I gotta turn there, folks. I'm just like you. I don't have tabs in my mind. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. It sounds something like this right here. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, Knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood all over the world. He is seeking you. And if you're an easy target, he'll take you. And let me tell you something. The world makes us an easy target today. How many of you are kind of beaten down and kind of tired? Okay. It's real easy to become a target when you're wore out. How many of you are suffering through some things in your life right now? You, you got some trials, some things going on in your life. Maybe you lost a loved one and you're, and you're struggling through that and you're battling it. Whatever. If you're not careful, that's a time to be easy prey. Because you're down and you're out and you're not, you're not seeking God spiritually like you normally would because you're hurting. And you're just trying to get better. You're just... Let me tell you something. When a gazelle's tired, they don't run as fast. And the slowest gazelle gets eaten. When a gazelle is hurting or sick, they don't run as fast. The slowest gazelle gets eaten. And I know most of you are looking around going, I just have to be better than some of these. <laughs> That's wrong. That is not right. Because you don't run in a herd. We talked about this Wednesday night. We talked about the banana principle. It's a principle I live with. And people struggle with this all the time. But it's simple and it's true. Have you ever peeled a banana while it was still in the bunch? No. Nope. You always break it loose and then you peel it. You know why? Because when it's in the bunch, it's protected by the other bananas around it. You can't peel it. You can't break that stalk off. But just as soon as you separate it from the bunch. Now, why is going to church important? You ain't separated from the bunch. Right. Yeah. Well, now, Brother Joe, I, you can Brother Joe me all you want to. You can give me any reason, any excuse, and you know what? In your mind, it can be valid. Heck, you might even make it valid in my mind. But that don't excuse it in God's mind. And after all, he's the one we do and will not be. So make sure you're taking care of your business. Now, God has a plan for you, James 4, 7. James 4, 7. Pretty simple. When you hear it, you'll go, I've known that all along. Well, then use it. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Three things. Submit yourself to God. 
resist the devil, and then turn around and wave at him. Bye, please. Whatever. <laughs> See you. Now, some of you don't even get that part. Because you're just stuck in this vicious cycle of the world. The news. How many of you still watch the news or read it if you don't watch it? Have you heard of anything good come out of there in the last year? Rain. <laughs> hey, don't look the poor meteorologist in with the news acres. He has enough trouble all on his own. We haven't had a good weather forecast since Rusty Gary went. <laughs> that is ugly, isn't it? Because yeah. I kind of like the guy doing it, but still. <laughs> I grew up with Rusty. Come on, folks. But the news reporting is awful. They would have you just go out in your garage and put a rope around your neck because we're not going to win. It's just that bad. The world's going to hell in a handbasket and there's nothing you can do. I beg the difference. There's plenty you can do. Our political and judicial systems are becoming more and more corrupt. And it's starting to come out. We're starting to see it. We're starting to see how they all act. I'm not picking on one party versus another. But everybody has troubles. There's struggles. The devil's infiltrated it. And he's using it to destroy people and destroy a way of life. We have people in this country calling for a civil war. Did we not learn anything from the first one? No, we forgot it. And those who forget about those kind of things and don't learn from them are bound to repeat them. We have people that are lying to the devil to just, to, to just create hate in their heart. Just hatred among people. You don't look like I do. You don't act like I do. You don't think like I do, so you must hate me. You know what? My dad and I politically never thought alike. Till the day he left this earth, we did not think alike. But I didn't hate him. I would argue with him till I was blue in the face and he's not going to change his mind. But I didn't hate him. Today, if I don't see things the way you see, your job's to hate me for it. That's the lesson being taught. If somebody don't agree with you, then they're against you. That's not true. I don't agree with a lot of things, but I ain't against somebody. Honestly. But that's the way we're taught to think, which does nothing but what? Create hate among people. You don't see the world like I see it? So be it. Doesn't mean I have to hate you. As a matter of fact, God tells us that we have to love everybody. Wait a minute now, this is going to get real fun here. Because there's some people that have trouble just loving anybody. Here's where it gets really deep. He tells us to love our enemies. Oh, see, y'all know y'all from the Bible. Now, how hard is that? That's real hard, and the devil knows it. So what does he do? He creates hate in your heart for your enemy instead of love in your heart for your enemy. Right. And guess what? As Christians, we buy into that. Guess what? The Bible speaks against the Bible speaks against sin. Do you hate sinners? Listen to me before you speak. The Bible speaks against sin. Do you hate sinners? No. The Bible speaks against murderers. Do you hate murderers? No. See, some of you don't know what you hate. You just, if the preacher looks 
turns and you go, oh, wait a minute, I'll change my answer. No. We're not supposed to hate anybody. We're supposed to love and pray for. Don't agree with. You know what? I don't agree with criminals. I don't agree with that lifestyle. I don't. I don't hate them. People make mistakes. They have a chance to redeem themselves with God. They ask if you'll forgive them, so why wouldn't I? Murderers have an opportunity at forgiveness. If they ask God for forgiveness, then guess what I have to do? God didn't look at me and say, I tell you what, I'm going to forgive them. You go ahead and hate them. You know, the Christians, we spend so much time, if we can't reform them, we've got to hate them. Let me tell you something, folks. There is a large, large contingent of people that are going to hell. Period. You ain't going to save them. You can, you can preach to them till you're blue in the face. They're going to hell. Because of their own decisions and their own ways of living. There's a reason that the road to hell is wide and many will find it. And I don't know about you, but guess what? There's a whole lot more people driving down the expressway than there are down the service road. I want you to think about that a minute. Because I'm in the express lane and I'm going someplace. I got someplace to be. I got things to do. I'm over here in the big highway and I'm headed. Woo, it's broad. I got plenty of room. I can change lanes. I can cut in and out. Here we go. And then about the only time we get over on the service road is when we have to get off to go someplace and do something. Makes us think a little bit. Makes us slow down. But well, how many of you ever turn off on them old country roads where if you get behind a tractor or you get behind a trailer, you could add an hour to your trip? Well, let me tell you something. That's the kind of path we're talking about going to heaven. That's the kind of path we're talking about going to heaven. And the Lord says, few are going to find it. You know what? Few are going to find it. They ain't got time. I got some place to be. I don't have time to take this. And if they do, you know, <laughs> and they kill other Christians along the way. Oh, oh, ouch. We're going to the same place. The end is heaven. Slow your roll. Enjoy the sights. No, 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 no. We got some place to be. Got to get there. Got to get it done. Everyone, including us as Christians, want it your way. Every one of us wants it our way. And we're willing to hurt people or even kill people to get it. Now, here's the neat difference. People who don't know God are willing to hurt people or kill people to get it. People who do know God are only willing to hurt people to get it. That's the only difference. That's why you hear all the time. How many of you? Let's have a little fun with this. How many of you have ever been hurt in the church? Somebody, somebody in the church, the way they acted, the way they spoke to you, whatever. Be honest, don't lie. You've been hurt by church folks. You've been hurt by the church itself. You've been hurt by the pastor. Have you might be me, don't lie, tell the truth.
No, I don't want to hate all the ladies. Come on. You're just dragging me in now. We'll find out how many of them really hate you, not just your wife. Change the subject because I only have about five minutes. One through seven. To the choir master, the sons of Carl, according to Alma, a song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Listen to me, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. We will not fear though the earth gives way. Though the mountains may be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, and it reads like this. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And last, in Philippians 4, 12 and 13, most of you already know this. And I'll get there in just a minute. Philippians 4, 12, and 13, and it reads like this. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I've been at the high, I've been at the low. I've been hungry and I've had plenty. I've been at ease and I've been troubled. But what I do know is he will never leave me nor forsake me. And through him, I can do all things. Amen. I don't know about you. I really don't. I, it's not my job to walk your life. I don't walk in your shoes. And so I don't know what struggles you have in life. But every one of us walk through different areas of our life where we struggle, where we have battles, where we have trials. Some of them are, some of them are physical in our home. Some of, them are, some of them are with our family. Some of them are with our friends. Some of them are with our co-workers. Some of them are with a job. Some of them are with our church family. Some of them are issues outside the church in life. But no matter what you're going through, God says, I already know. If you're my child, I have plans for you. And they're plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I've already put that in place. I've ordained a will for you in heaven, and your job is to carry it out on earth. You pray about it. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Many of you didn't even think about it in those times. But that's what's happening. You know, we look around today at the world, and we see how it's going, and we ask ourselves, how will we ever be victorious? How can we overcome this? Well, let me tell you something. Me by myself can't. 
You by yourself can. But when we, when we unite as brothers and sisters in Christ under the power of the Most High God, we can move mountains. Amen. The problem is, as Christians, we've just decided to sit back and let it come. Whatever comes, just comes. Whatever happens, just happens. Most of us is more determined to throw an AR over our shoulder and go downtown and stand on the courthouse square. We shall not be moved. <laughs> then we are to get down on our knees and go, we definitely won't be moved. Amen. You know why? Because this is the stance we've been taught all our lives. Right. Not that one. However, and I know some of you guys will never get back up. Some of you guys will never get back up. <laughs> this is the stance we should be in. Because yeah. yeah. that's the stance that won't be moved. But that's a stance many of us will never be able to take. And it's not an issue of, well, that's just not the way I am. Well, if it's not, then you need to talk to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be wound differently. Yeah. Well, you just don't understand the way I was raised. <laughs> you, need to, you needed to come home with me. Some of you may have known my daddy, and if you did, you knew what kind of man he was. We don't put up with no nonsense. We don't start no trouble when we defend ourselves, and we defend ourselves well, and we keep defending ourselves. And if you get your tail whooped, don't come home whining to me tomorrow. You better be prepared to go back in there. Because you may get it whooped 15, 20 times, but that guy won't respect you. After a while, he's going to say, golly, just quit coming. That's the way we grew up. So you know what? You know what's easy for me to do? Okay, here we go. I had to learn that. Yeah. And I can tell you which one's most effective. Because I've used them both. And I can tell you which one's most effective. So Christian, I challenge you today. Get your heart and your life right with the Lord. And you will be victorious in whatever you come to this church by your head. I don't know where you stand in your walk with the Lord. And I'm not here to judge anybody. But you know. Some of you right now, the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart, convicting your soul. That pastor was talking about you. I've sat right where you're sitting, and I have literally had the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and say, that preacher preached to you this morning. Dude, it's time for change. And I've had the Spirit speak to me just like that. I know some of you think he only does the we's and these and the thou's and no he just he get playing in your ear dude you need to change you need to get your life right and I'm going to tell you that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you giving you a chance to come clean before the Lord you don't have to come up here and confess anything in my ear I don't need to know your sins I couldn't forgive them if I knew them all you need to confess those to the Lord you and him. I'm going to simply ask you one question this morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you've never had that opportunity to come to know him, or maybe you have, and you've just kind of let the world cause you to slip away from him, whatever it may be. You're saying, Pastor, I need, I need you to pray with me this morning. I need to come back to him. If that's you here this morning, I'll ask you to slip your hand up and right back down. I just want to pray with you. Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Thank you for that hand. Anyone else? Pastor, you spoke to my heart this morning. The Spirit's speaking to me now. Where are you at this morning? Don't let this moment pass. Because this is a moment that the Spirit has for you. Anyone else?
wonderful this morning. We had two young ladies raise their hand. There's nothing more beautiful in the Lord's eyes than young people who want to know Him and want, want Him to be a part of their life. And so for you two young ladies who raise your hand, I'm going to ask you to just pray a simple prayer with me. The church is going to join in with us. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance. So if you would join me now. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm, a I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe you died. I believe you died. That I might be forgiven. That I, be I believe you rose again. I believe you rose again. That I might have eternal life. Have eternal life. By faith, I accept your cleansing blood. I accept your cleansing blood. To forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. And I accept you. I accept you. As my Lord and Savior. And I will walk with you every day in your name. Amen. I promise you, young ladies, you raised your hand, you confessed before God that you were a sinner and you needed Him. He heard your prayers, He's changed your life, He's the Lord of your life. Now we get to walk it out. Yes. And I'm going to tell you now, this should be your church family. This should be your church family. You should be able to love on these folks, and they should be able to love on you. They should be able to walk with you through thick and thin. They should be able to be there by your side in your darkest moment and celebrate the mountaintop with you. That's what family does. And that's what this family should be doing. Church, as we prepare to stand this morning, just before you do, I want to share something with you from Miss Charlotte, Brother Woody Hall. It says, to our precious Maxville Cowboy Church family and friends, we can't find the perfect words to tell you how much your prayers and words of encouragement and love have meant to us. Woody is recovering from his surgery and mom is with the Lord and Savior. It took him 84 years to build her mansion. We're so blessed to have such a wonderful church family and family in Christ. Brother Charlotte, Brother Wood. You know what? That's what family does. That's what family does. When you're going through the darkest moments, that family comes along and they you. And they strengthen you. And they give you words of encouragement. And, and that's what it's about. Something as simple as just checking on somebody. Something as simple as just, what can I do? How can I be of help? Most people will never, never bother you with their troubles. But you simply make yourself available and do the best you can. And if you can't do anything else, you can pray. Learn that posture I just showed you a few moments ago. You know why I was able to get up from that? As a fat guy, I don't get up from a lot of things very fast. But you know why I can get up from that? Because I practice that. That's why I can get up from that. <laughs> Lord says, you don't have to get up from anything else, but you can get up from that. Some of you out there now in agreement, you ain't going to make you get up from the table. <laughs> Please stand with me, church, as we prepare to dismiss today. It's been a beautiful and wonderful time we've got to share together. I hope you leave here with a little victory in your mind. Amen. 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 I hope you leave here with victory in your mind because guess what? We're going to go out and fight tomorrow. We're going to go out and battle the devil. Some of us will battle before we get out the door good. But we've got to be prepared. We've got to go get him. So I'm going to leave you with go get him. Sick him. That's the way it should be. You shouldn't let the you should let the church go and God fearing, God loving people out of the devil. Go get him. <laughs> See? Yeah. Love that. Bow your heads with me this morning. What a beautiful and wonderful time to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Brother Mickey, would you close us in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here today, Father. Thank you for just just watching over us, Heavenly Father. I know I have a lot to say to you, but there's not enough time in the day, Father. But just guide each and every one of us here. Uh, just that, that devil is attacking us, Father. And we.
we as disciples, we as children of Christ, we come to you, we get on our knees, and we pray that you watch over us, Father, and just guide us as we go through our week, our days, our hours. Uh, just, just be with us, Father. Uh, thank you for allowing Pastor Joe uh, to be up there and minister to us. Uh, but I just, I just ask, Father, that you just bind that Satan. We bind them as, as children of God that we attack them because he's attacking us. This, this is our country. This is, this is where we stand. This is where you got us in our fight, Father, for our country, for our family. Think of your family. Guide us, Father, in our weeks, in our works, our homes. No matter what we do, Father, guide each and every one of us. We, we look to you, Father. We get on our knees like our pastor tells us to do. He is your disciple. He tells us what to do, Father. Just guide us. We, we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.